let's talk about his nutrition now. So, 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 uh, let's pretend that you, you, you assess him. So I forget what I said he weighs. Uh, let's make up a weight. He's 175 pounds. He's 180 pounds. I don't know, whatever. Um, and I think we said he's 20 ish percent by DEXA, low twenties. Um, and let's say he's eating 120 grams of protein a day. So right off the bat, you're going to say, Hey, you're a little light on protein. This guy is going to be willing to eat anything you say. So if it, where do you want him? Do you want this guy at 180 grams a day, 200 grams a day? What was his body weight again? Let's say 180. Yeah, I mean, I would if he likes protein, I would say you know you're not miss, you're not having any downsides to having 200 grams a day, and that's a nice number to shoot for. So I would probably start somewhere around there, um, making sure his calories are adequate as well for facilitating recovery and enough carbohydrate and whatnot. So in this in this guy's case, he um, because he really wants to gain lean mass. How do you think about cycling him in terms of making him hypercaloric? I mean, where, where are you trying to put his energy balance? How much weight do you want him gaining? Since he's been training for a long time and he's older, the likelihood that he's going to be able to gain lean mass without at least some body fat is probably pretty low. Um, and I get this all the time from people. I want to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. Well, if you're our, our subject A, the lady who'd never trained before, Absolutely. I mean, you heard me. I was like, yeah, we can recomp her. No problem. She's going to gain some muscle and lose some, some body fat. When you've been training for a long period of time, the, you have to have everything lined up just to gain ounces of lean body mass. And so part of lining that up is also a slight caloric surplus. There, we, there is a new meta-analysis that came out that showed that an energy deficit it's not quite the same thing, but they did show an energy deficit impairs lean body mass accrual. So it's not enough just to eat protein. It, it, it makes sense because we do see in an energy deficit uh, decreased rates of basal protein synthesis. So it makes sense. I mean, if you are in an energy deficit, mm -hmm. from a mechanistic perspective, it activates AMP kinase, which, inhi which is an inhibitor of mTOR. Um, so it, it, it makes sense. It also makes sense from a teleological perspective that if you don't have excess energy, you know, this remodeling is extremely energy expensive. Why would we want to create more of it if we don't have the energy to support it? So a protein sparing fast isn't necessarily going to save you from losing uh, lean mass. If it, because again, if it's, if it's, it's, I mean, it might be better than a carb fast, you know, in other words, if you're going to eat a thousand calories a day, you're probably better off having them be as much protein as possible. But right. just because you have 200 grams of protein in your diet, if the calories are exceptionally low, you're, you're probably losing lean mass. Is that my, is that how I'm hearing it? What I would say is that a day of an energy deficit is not something I'd really be worried about. No, no, but I'm saying, let's say somebody took this approach and said, look, for two weeks, I'm going to go a thousand calories a day, virtually all protein in an effort to yeah. get as lean as possible without losing lean mass. You might be able to not lose lean mass, but the likelihood you would gain lean mass I is see. very, very low for, for somebody who's been training for a while. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that the, the more advanced you get, the more things you have to have lined up correctly to, to continue to push, especially if you're drug free. So yeah, for me, like I've, and you can do it in sprints. You can do it in, in, in different sections, you know? So I'll, like I've, I went from, I was in the 230 pound class um, back in 2019. And I just started to drop back down to my original weight class of 205 pounds. I did that over the course of about a year, but um, that was taken in sprints. So I, I would do fat loss sprints, for example. So I would do like two or three weeks of like a pretty aggressive deficit, like 750 to 1,000 calories I'm sorry, a day. this is for powerlifting. Yeah, that was for powerlifting. And what body fat is your performance at its best? How, because you obviously don't want to be powerlifting at 7% body fat. I'm still pretty good at seven. Really? I still maintain pretty well. Yeah, I still maintain pretty well. Maybe not quite as good. I, I will, let me put it this way. I can still perform well at seven. But if I have a couple of days where I'm not dialed in, I'll start to feel it. So I've got, I've got, I'm right on that edge. I'm teetering on that edge at seven on calipers. That is. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that over the course of the year and I did it in sprints. So I would do three weeks, lose like target, trying to lose five, six pounds. And then I would go to maintenance for like at least as long. And I kind of built that into my lifestyle, you know, 
I really like that for a lot of clients. Actually, a lot of our team violin coaches use a lot of what we call diet breaks where the people are eating at maintenance. So it's like, okay, vacation coming up, diet break for two weeks. Everything looks like it's going to be normal for three, four weeks. Boom, let's do a fat loss sprint. So coming back to building muscle, I'll do sections of, okay, I'm overfeeding in this slight caloric surplus for about eight weeks. Okay, we gained, you know, three pounds of body weight. I'm going to maintain for a little while just to make sure it doesn't get too out of hand in terms of body fat level. Now I've kind of got adjusted this. Now I'm going to do another, you know, six to eight weeks. But what I'll tell people is if fat loss should be slow, at least for people who are well-trained, if fat loss should be slow to retain lean body mass, then weight gain should be mm. snail's pace. So what's a rule of thumb for this guy then? If you, if, if he's going to gain five pounds of total body weight of which we're going to hope three is lean, two is fat. Is that a good goal? Um, how long would you want him to take to gain five pounds? Probably at least 12 weeks. Okay. So he's doing that once a quarter, but it might be something more like where it's six months, but there's, you know, 12 weeks where we get him up five pounds and then we say, okay, let's trim a little bit of this fat back off that we, we put on, we lose three pounds. Then we do another gaining cycle, put on five pounds. And what tends to happen is the composition gets a little better each time. And again, this is now this is completely anecdotal in my coaching experience. But when you put on weight, and we see this in studies, it's for trained people, it really depends. But it's somewhere around 50-50 lean mass to fat mass, sometimes mm. even 40, 60, if you're really well trained. So 40 lean, um, 60 fat. Wow. So the implication, by the way, is when you're gaining weight, you're getting fatter by, bo by, by body composition because you're presumably starting out at a yes. less than 50% body fat. Well, it, dep it depends on the training status and yeah. a whole host of other factors. So that's an important thing for you to tell this guy, which is, Hey, if you're going to be rigorously following body comp, don't be disappointed if your body fat goes up in that cycle. We're playing the long game here, right? It's like investing. Let me put it that way. So it's like investing. You're, you're taking money away from you now in this immediate moment that you could have. So hopefully you have more money later, right? So the good thing is that when we lose body fat, we tend to lose most, if we're, if we're resistance training, we tend to lose mostly from body fat, right? Yep. So if we're doing this cycle over time, hopefully each time it gets a little better. Now, there are, there are limits to this. If eventually you butt up against your genetic limit of, or probably your genetic limit. What I always say is you never really know if you're at your genetic limit. And what I always tell people is I, I show them this picture of me at, at 21 years old where I'd been resistance training hard for you know, three and a half, four years, where most people say you hit your genetic limit you know, somewhere around there. And I show that picture. And I show a picture of me now at age 40 and I mean, the difference in my leg musculature and my overall musculature is enormous. But if you had just gone year by year, you would have seen very little difference, right? And so what I'll tell people is, you know, you might think you're at your genetic limit, but you're probably not. And it's probably more like a, an asymptote. Yeah, Are you familiar yeah. with an as yeah, asymptote? Yeah, an asymptote to so, show you. Yeah. yeah, so you never, you never really hit like a hard cap limit, but the gains become so minimal that it's almost not measurable. So, um, yeah, I think when it comes to, you know, these, like this kind of person, one really focusing on, okay, making sure that they can do a lot of resistance training because it is going to take quite a big of a stimulus to, to get them there. Focusing on stimulus versus fatigue. So doing high stimulus, low fatigue movements so that they can accumulate enough volume without overreaching all the time. Uh, because if they can train for 12 weeks without needing a taper versus six weeks, I mean, that's more stimulus, right? And then putting them in a very slight caloric surplus. And when I say slight caloric surplus, I'm talking about 100 to 200 calories a day and over their maintenance. And now what does that look like? Well, that means that you're going to have weeks where you don't gain anything. Anybody, I don't know if you've ever done this, Peter, like doing no. where people have like tried to do a super lean gaining phase. What tends to happen is people get really frustrated because the weight comes on so slow that they end up just throwing down a bunch of calories so that they can say they gained the weight and it doesn't go well. Um, and what tends to happen is weight gain comes on in chunks, just like weight loss tends to happen in chunks. 
um, weight gain tends to happen in chunks. You can be stable, 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 even though you're in a calorie surplus and all of a sudden, boom, your weight's up two pounds, you know, just randomly and it sticks. And we don't have all the explanations for why it happens that way, but just know that that's normal for those listening. And again, don't look at, oh, I gained two pounds from the past three days and it's, it's not going down, it's staying. Look at the fact that you've been doing this for four weeks now and you gained two pounds on average. So you're right in line with kind of what the goal was. So you want to look at that monthly, that really that monthly, month to month average in a gaining phase and say, okay, am I hitting my milestones in terms of like the overall rate of progress and try to not worry too much about those, those little things. Thank you.